Hola. Hola. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Um, thank you for coming today. Thank you for the invite. Yeah. Uh, hey, wine snobs, in case you're wondering who this is, this is Uncork Notes from Instagram, Maria. And um, we've gone on a couple wine tasting adventures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's just about as passionate about wine as I am. And uh, that's quite refreshing. <laughs> yeah, it's like we don't mind to go wine tasting every weekend. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> Any free moment you have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so thank you for coming today. Thank you for the invite. I really appreciate it. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, today we are uh, doing a little um, segment for uh, Ferment Day. Yeah, I learned about that wine variety I today. Yeah, I literally just looked it up last night. <laughs> yeah, well, you when I came in here, you told me about it and I didn't know about it before, but it's going to be interesting to try it. It's going to be a new one. I know. It was harder than I thought to find uh, a bottle of Ferment, but I actually found two today, so... We'll have a dry ferment, I guess, and then a late harvest ferment. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So I guess ferment is uh, Hungarian? That's yeah. what we discovered today. Is yes. <laughs> one of the most popular Hungarian uh, varieties. Yeah. And um, it's used to make uh, Tokaji. You said it had notes of... Uh... So, uh, yeah, based on my research, yes. my recent research, the primary flavors are mayor lemon, green apple, ginger. Interesting. Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting combination of flavors. A little bit refreshing. It should taste a little bit like Riesling. Hmm. I guess it makes sense. Usually you can buy dry Riesling and late harvest Riesling, so kind of like yeah. you make the connection there. Yeah. But We'll see. Oh, this is going to be interesting. So today we are going to Hungary. Yes. <laughs> I've never been to Hungary. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> but my palate is going to take me there. So we have the bottles chilling right now and uh, we're going to go grab in a bit. Yes. And uh, take a, start taking a close look. We'll start with the dry uh, mm -hmm. ferment and then we'll go to the late harvest. So. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if those notes that you've kind of read up on briefly uh, appear and show up yeah. in in this wine and then see how that uh, manifests itself in the late harvest. Well, here we are. The Tokai. Tokai Asu. I'm excited. I think Tokai is the region. Yeah, I think so, Sophia. So it's like, a, I was reading that it's like a region in Hungary where these wines are coming from. And so this variety, Furman, uh, it's used to make this dessert wine store called Tokaya Soup. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation though, but... <laughs> it looks like a Sauvignon Blanc or a Chardonnay. Like a chili? Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Mm, it's not giving me a lot in the nose. Yeah, it's like minerally. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of a mineral leather a little bit of apple yeah you can see that you yeah, got green apple mm -hmm. Interesting. definitely dry it you know yeah it smells dry on the nose there okay it's time right. to yeah Hmm. Definitely green apple. Yeah. And the ginger at the end. In the back of the palate. Oh yeah. Way back. Way there. back in the yeah. palate. Yeah. That's interesting. It's very, it's very good. I really like it. It's perfect for like a summer afternoon mm -hmm. when you're just chilling. It's got a slightly buttery mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. But there's a tartness underlying. That's the green apple. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm. And then the spike at the end, like the yeah. spice at the end of the ginger. And it kind of it kind of wets the palate as opposed to dries it out, which is mm -hmm. interesting. Is it? Uh huh. It's mouth water. Yeah, it's mouth watering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
I can see the resemblance to Riesling. Yeah. I think this definitely should, needs to be chilled for sure. For sure. Yeah. I, I can't see this any warmer than what it is and we just chilled it for maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah, maybe less. Yeah. Mm. That's an interesting conversation piece. Definitely not as um, tart, like acidic as say like um, a Chardonnay. Yeah, no, but it also has a hint of like the lemon mayor it's supposed to have. Mm -hmm. This is one of the primary flavors. Yeah. And it also, I think that mouth watering effect comes from that um, mayor lemon because mayor lemons tend to be sweeter than just lemons. Oh, there is a thing, a mayor lemon? Mm -hmm. Oh, I learned something new again. And then <laughs> they tend to be sweeter than the regular lemon. Oh, okay. So obviously it's going to give us a little bit of uh, mouth watering, but not a lot, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of yeah. like the end effect of the wine. It's interesting. It's an interesting combination. Definitely unlike any of the typical whites that I've had, which are, you know, those that are typical here. Mm -hmm. Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay. Very um, different. Very different. Mm -hmm. um, what other whites do we have around here? Um, Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc is really big, yes. Mm -hmm. Classburg, um, the whole region in Classburg yeah. is barely big than Chenin Blanc. Mm. But it's definitely different because those ones are either too sweet or too citrusy. Yeah. And this one lies kind of in the middle with a nice balance between acidic and sweetness. I agree. It's definitely got a nice mouthfeel there. Um, there's an, that interesting gingery spice on At the, the end, yeah, I the really back. like that. It does something it's unexpected. It's like a tingling sensation, yeah. sensation at the end. It's really <laughs> nice. Mm. Wow, ferment. Ferment. Salud. Salud. <laughs> mm. So, it'd be interesting to see what the dessert is like. The dessert one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah. picture this wine evolving into a dessert <laughs> wine, but... Hmm. Because how I picture myself with this wine is like kind of in a warm afternoon in the sun. You know, kind of like a summer vibe. Yeah. Um, but the dessert wine doesn't really go with that profile. Yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> you want to try? Should we try the dessert? Should we jump into it? Mm -hmm. Sure. This is the late harvest ferment. Mm -hmm. Let's see how this goes. Let's see. I'm excited. <laughs> Honeysuckle. Honeysuckle. Yep. Definitely. It's very predominant um, smell. Yeah. That it's 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 um, it's it it's front and center it takes over. Mm -hmm. Almost has to wear off a little bit, air out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And then you can pick up a little dead apple is also there on the yeah. back. Yeah. It's a very dense wine. It's heavy yeah. in the glass and has a nice gold color. I can feel when I swirl it how it it pulls the glass from side yeah. to side. It's very heavy. Mm. Oh wow! Not as sweet as I expected. From it's delicious. Nose. Yeah. It's nice balance because you have the crease of um, the apple, yeah. but it has a honey finish at the end that covers all your mouth. It's yeah. delicious. I wonder if that is as a result a play between the residual sugar from the late harvest and that same type of um, creamy soft mouthfeel that we kind of picked up in the last one. That yeah. mouth watering type, you know. I can see it's... how this is an evolution of the dry wrestling, not wrestling, the Yes. <laughs> the dry the ferment. Dry ferment. <laughs> mm. I like it. I can see this one being the perfect pairing for like apple pie. Yeah. Or pumpkin pie. Yeah. Um, that's real good. I really like it. Yeah, I do too. I'm impressed. Um, it's very unique. I love that very that honey essence just permeates. You know, the honeysuckle turns more honey as you, you pointed out before. Um, 
it's it's a bit, it's unique. It's not like a typical port or. No, I think ports are a completely different style where they are too strong, and they need something really sweet to balance it out. Yeah. Where this one is a little bit more subtle, and like it might be better with like subtle or less sweet desserts like yeah. apple pie or yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Wow. I think I'm definitely going to be adding this to the cellar. I think it would be an interesting, unique wine. And I don't do dessert wines much, but that those little moments, those moments where someone walks in and brings up, you know, ferment or organ Hungarian wine. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it would be it would be a great, you know, one of those unique offerings. I'd love to see the look on their face. And like, oh, here, here it is. Yeah. Um, I'm adding ferment for summer, the dry yeah. ferment for summer. Yeah. And then I'm adding to the lineup this one for like, Thanksgiving or Christmas, yeah. usually when you serve like pie, yeah. I'm definitely adding them, adding it to the lineup. It's, it's really good. It's really smooth. You gotta watch out with this. You'll suck the whole bottle down. Ferment is a native Hungarian varietal. Both wines we explored are from the Tokai region. While fairly dry overall, it still retained mouth-watering characteristics. Green apples, ginger, and citrus were fairly prominent, as well as a noticeable mineral terroir. The late harvest ferment showed very similar characteristics, but also added prominent honeysuckle on the nose and in the body, as well as a noticeable weighted viscosity. However, it wasn't as sweet as one might expect, making it more enjoyable as a casual sip. It's interesting to see how different varietals express themselves. I very much enjoyed exploring ferment for the first time ever. I certainly look forward to exploring more Hungarian wines in the future. Have you tried Hungarian wines? Do you have a favorite? Please share in the comments below. Most of my wine adventures always start in the comments section. Thank you for sipping along with Wine Snob. Remember to venture off the beaten path. Until the next time, cheers.